Now we're going to look at relative atomic mass. First of all, carbon-12 was decided to have um, the ideal standard for atomic mass. Carbon has exactly six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. So carbon-12 has been used as a comparison for atomic mass units, or AMUs. So one atomic mass unit is one-twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. And the symbol for atomic mass unit is AMU. Now the mass number and the atomic mass are going to be slightly different um, because the mass number is just adding the number of protons and neutrons, and this will be a whole number. Whereas the atomic mass is averaging the masses of the different isotopes. So this is where you're going to get um, a decimal number, and this is what you see on the periodic table. So that average atomic mass comes from the average number of isotopes that occur in nature and then averaged out with the different isotopes of that specific atom. So it, let's say if um, looking at those three hydrogen isotopes, if there's more of the hydrogen one, then the average atomic mass is going to be closer to a mass of one rather than the three. Relating mass to number of atoms. So first of all, we have what's called the mole. The mole is an amount, just like a dozen means 12. The mole is the number of particles of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon 12. And this is an SI unit. Um, so if I say, what is the SI unit for amount? You would say a mole. And a mole is designated as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. When we're looking at a mole or Avogadro's number, we are looking at the number of particles in exactly one mole of a substance. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is the number that we're working with. So if I have a mole of anything, I'm going to have that number. So if I have a mole of apples, I'm going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd apples. If I have a mole of um, donuts, I would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. It's just like a, an amount, just like a dozen. Um, how big is a mole is a video that I will link below um, that I would like you to watch. It kind of gives you a perspective on how big that actually is. Um, but for example, if you have 5 billion people counting to a mole at the rate of one number per second, so you would say one, two, three. So every second you're increasing by 5 billion. It would take 4 million years to count to that number. So a lot of times the mole is played off um, as Avogadro's number or avocado. So what do you get when you cut an avocado into 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces? Guacamole. Molar mass is looking at the mass of one mole of a substance. And so one mole of a substance is going to equal the atomic mass in grams. So if I have one mole of carbon, I would look up the atomic mass of carbon, which is about 12.99, I believe, on the periodic table, and it would tell you the mass in grams. So we're going to use that to do what are called mole to gram conversions. So we're going to look at a few sample problems converting between grams and moles. So first of all, this says, what is the mass in grams of 3.5 moles of copper? So one thing that we have to remember is that when we are looking at moles, one mole is always going to equal the mass in grams from the chart. 
So the mass is going to come from our periodic table. So if we pull up the periodic table, we are looking at copper. So copper is right here with a mass of 63. We're going to round to two decimals and say 0.55. So if we come back, the mass of copper is 63.55 grams. So one mole of copper would be 63.55 grams. In our problem, we have 3.5 moles of copper. So we're going to do 3.5 moles and we're going to do a conversion just like we've done before. So moles, we'll do our multiply and our line. And because we have moles on top, we'll put moles on bottom. And we're going to grams of copper, so grams needs to go on top. And we just said that one mole equals the mass in grams. So if we'll put one with the mole, and on all of these, you'll always have one with your mole. And then our mass off the chart, which was 63.55. Now we're ready to multiply. So if we take 3.5 times the 63.55, that's going to give us 222.43 grams on our calculator. If we look at the next problem, we've got what is the mass in grams of 2.25 moles of iron? So we'll start out with that 2.25 moles of iron. Do our multiply in line, and since moles is on top, we're going to put moles on bottom. And we said one mole equals grams on top. So now we have to again find iron which is Fe, so it's 55.85. So we'll put 55.85, and then we're ready to multiply. And we'll do the 2.25 times the 55.85, and we get 125.66 grams for our answer. In this problem, we're given grams and they want us to convert to moles. So we have 11.9 grams of aluminum. So multiply in line. And since we're starting with grams, grams will go on bottom and moles will go on top. So we need to find our aluminum. So aluminum is 26.58. So one with the mole and 26.58 with our grams. Now, since our number's on the bottom, we're gonna do 11.9 divided by 26.58. And I get for this 0 0.45 and moles are on top, so the answer will be in mole. Now we're gonna look at converting using that Avogadro's number. So on this, you're going to have one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or you could say particles or molecules or formula units. We will usually use atoms or molecules, um, but any of those numbers are interchangeable. So for the first sample problem, it says how many moles are equivalent to 3.0 one times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. So if we write that down, 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver, and we want to know how many moles. So we have atoms on bottom because we started with it on top and we're going to moles. So again, one mole, and we said one mole always equals 6.022 times 10 to 
times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So here I'll put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And now I'm ready to solve. So we will take the 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd divided by the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And it's going to be very important that when you type this in your calculator, you put that number in parentheses. So I'm going to type it into my calculator. 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd divided by parentheses 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And I get for my answer point, um, and it says 0.4998 on my calculator. So I'm going to round that to 0.5 moles. So I get 0.5 moles for this answer. But again, make sure that when you type that in to divide on your calculator, you're using your parentheses. Another cute little uh, meme mole problems, just call 6021023. Uh, this is a question we will um, look at in class together. There are more atoms in a glass of water than a glasses of water in the ocean. And we'll discuss that later on. So this is going to be um, looking at how many moles are equal to 2,500 atoms of tin. So we'll start off with 2,500 atoms. And we want to know how many moles. So we will have atoms are on top. So we're going to put atoms on bottom. And always with your atoms, it's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And we're going to moles. So we'll put one mole on top. If you're doing mole and atom problems, they're actually pretty easy because you don't really have to look anything up as long as you know that it's always one with the mole and it's always 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd with the atoms. And again, we're dividing, so make sure that you put that in parentheses. So 2,500 divided by parentheses, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And my calculator tells me my answer is 4.15 times 10. And my calculator says E negative 21, but that means that times 10 to the negative 21, and my units are moles. These last couple example problems are actually going to be two-step problems. Um, we've gone grams to moles, and we've gone moles to atoms, but now we're going to look at how do we go grams to atoms. So in this problem, it wants to know how many grams are equal to 1.20 times 10 to the 8 atoms of copper. So I'm going to start by writing down my 1.2 times 10 to the 8th atoms. And we don't have an equality for grams to atoms. So we're going to have to take atoms to moles and then moles to the grams. So if we look over here, first we've got atoms. So atoms will go on the bottom. And we've got to go to moles, so moles on top. And it's always one mole, and that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now we've got moles on top, so in our next step, moles will go on bottom. And now we can take those moles to gram. And again, one with the mole. We're working with copper, so we're going to have to go back to our periodic table and find copper, and its mass is 63.55. So for our grams, we can put that 63.55 for our mass. Now we're ready to solve. So we're going to take that 1.2 times 10 to the 8th times 63.55 and divide that in parentheses, so 
make sure on your calculator you put the parentheses, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And my calculator tells me 1.266, so I'm going to round that to 27, times 10 to the negative 14th. And my units are whatever is on top in the last step, so grams. In this last example, we are looking at how many atoms are in four grams of sulfur. So we'll start out with our four grams of sulfur. And we're looking for atoms ultimately. So if we do four grams of sulfur, grams goes on bottom. And we can't go grams straight to atoms, so we're going to have to go grams to moles. Again, one with the mole, and now we have to look up the mass of sulfur, which sulfur is 32.066, so I'll use 32.07, so 32.07. Now I have moles on top, so moles has to go on bottom in my next step, and I was going to atoms, so that will be on top. One with the mole and atoms gets 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And now I'm ready to solve. So I'm going to take my 4 grams times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by that 32.07. And my calculator tells me 7.51 times 10 to the 22nd atoms.